representatives, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. I am grateful to participate in the 16th BRIC summit. Collectively, your countries represent nearly half of the world's population. And I salute your valuable commitment and support for multilateralism and international problem solving as clearly reflected in your team this year. No single group and no single country can act alone or in isolation. It takes a community of nations working as one global family to address global challenges. Challenges like the rising number of conflicts, the devastation of climate change, pollution and biodiversity loss, rising inequalities and lingering poverty and hunger, adept crises that threaten smoother plans for the future of many vulnerable countries, the fact that fewer than one-fifth of the Sustainable Development Goals are on track, a growing digital divide and a lack of guardrails for artificial intelligence and other frontier technologies, and the lack of representation of voice for developing countries at global decision-making tables, from the Security Council to the Bretton Woods system and beyond. These must change. September's UN Summit of the Future offered a roadmap for strengthening multilateralism and advancing peace, sustainable development and human rights. I see four areas for action. First, finance. Today's international financial system is not offering many vulnerable countries the safety net or level of support they need. The Pact for the Future calls for accelerating the reform of the international financial architecture that is outdated, ineffective and unfair, and includes a commitment to move forward with an SDG st stimulus to change the business model and substantially increase the lending capacity of multilateral development banks and their concessional funding to developing countries in vulnerable conditions, to recycle more special drawing rights, to restructure loans for countries drowning in debt, and to mobilize more international and domestic resources, public and private, for vital investments in developing countries. Next year's Conference on Financing for Development and the Summit on Social Development are two milestones to carry these efforts forward. And we must also recognize the importance of South-South cooperation. It doesn't replace the commitments and obligations of developed countries, but it is providing a growing contribution to supporting developing countries in overcoming obstacles to achieving the SDGs. Second, climate. Every country has committed to limit temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius. 